can you talk about what genetic drift is and how it's really impacted plants these days? Sure. So genetic drift would be either from super hybridizing something, especially with itself, or having just really old moms, you know, um, Remember that the plant's kind of constantly producing new tissue, and it's, again, constantly turning those immune system genes off and on, like we just talked about. So uh, if you have the mom that's growing in one kind of condition, and then the flowering conditions are much more different, it's, it's going to have a hard time with that. And also, too, as plants age, you know, they're going to have some genetic mutation just from the fact that the plant's just living longer, right? Um, the other thing that people forget with cannabis is cannabis has some issues, too, when you grow it too long because it wants to um, save its local genetic population. So uh, it's going to try to hermaphrodite on you once it hits a certain age, because that's built into the genes of the plant. The same reason why like root bound plants will trigger for the same thing, because uh, in the wild, right, you have a plant and it grows and grows and grows. It doesn't get pollinated, doesn't get pollinated, doesn't get pollinated. And now it gets a cold snap or it gets some kind of like weather condition that's going to potentially kill the plant in the near future it's going to immediately try to produce that female pollen so we can produce female plants so that it can die. And next year, its daughters can come back and try to be pollinated by outside genetics to preserve that local population. The plants evolved to do that. When it evolved in the steppes of, of Mongolia and Tibet, which is where it's from originally, um, it, it evolved that mechanism so that it didn't go extinct in its local region. And, and when you think about it evolutionarily, like, that makes a lot of sense for it to work, function that way, right? Uh, and, and, and evolutionarily, it, it's a big advantage. but when you're trying to veg it and keep it <laughs> from flipping, that's a problem because, you know, there is a maximum life on the plants, usually about a year and a half, two years, where they're just going to start to to get real weird on you. And some of those genes for that final end of life thing are starting to turn on because it's been alive too long or maybe it's stressed it out too much or it's root bound after that or whatever the, the pressure point is, but that something's going to eventually trigger those genes you know, if you don't restart it and take new clones, but even if you clone it, that clone's not going to be exactly the same as that mother was. It's going to be close, but it's going to have a few mutations that are different or a few adaptations, phenotypic adaptations, that are going to be slightly different from that mother. And over time, those start to build up and can cause issues. The other thing I see a lot in really old ones, and people often attribute it to genetic drift, but usually it's not. It's actually viral infection is, is um, you know, particularly mosaic virus and some of these others where... If the plant is healthy, it's not going to have any kind of negative impact, right? Um, you know, uh, as long as it's getting all of it needs and the immune system is kept healthy. But as the plant gets older and older, it's less able to fight that. So you get this gradual increase in viral load until it hits that critical point, and now it's expressing in the leaves suddenly. Um, you see this sometimes, too, with HLVD. HLVD in many cultivars will perfectly be fine if it's only detectable in the root system. It's not going to affect the yields of the flower. In fact, Kevin McKernan has a wonderful white paper on this specific problem. Um, whereas if the plant gets aged and that viral load gets up and up and up, now it's going to start to cause that, that leaf mutation and the upper part plant mutation and things like that as well. So that's, a, that's how, like, for instance, the hop industry has, has slowly gotten rid of uh, HLVD was they didn't ever got rid of HLVD completely. What they did was they got rid of all the cultivars that actually have problems with it. So it can remain latent in the plant, but not have yield effects or, or negative yield impact. So that, you know, uh, the industry is going to have to stop, you know, with this idea that they're ever going to get rid of it. it. It can be latent in cucumbers and tomatoes and corn, right? How are you going to get rid of that? You can't. And it's pollen spread. So, you could have a leaf hopper go bite the guy's corn and then reaffect your plants, right? That you just spent all this lab work on. It's a, it's a, it's an impossible task. You can't eliminate it, right? The hemp, the hops industry would have eliminated it a long time ago. They spent 200 years on this problem and they still haven't figured it out, right? So we're not, <laughs> and they spent a lot of money. As beer guys have as much money as the, the the medicinal plant growers do in terms of investment to protect their plants. So you know, again, if if companies like Unibrew can't solve this. You know, we're not going to do anything magically different overnight that's going to suddenly do it. So um, this is an, you know, another big issue where especially you know, I can go into most grow rooms and find at least one or two viral infected plants where people don't even realize it, especially mosaic virus where there or, or um, I've seen a lot in the last couple of years on outdoor plants, beet um, leaf curl virus or bean leaf curl virus, where it causes the really corkscrewing and stuff like that, um, where, you know, again, it might not show in the beginning, but after the plants hit six or eight months, suddenly it starts to rage out because that viral load has just hit that critical point where now it's going to express in the leaf tissue. So that's another one where, you know, you don't see as much when you have big genetic gene pool diversities, 
you don't have as much problems. Um, whereas with the small poly hybrid stuff, you do. This clip is brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code Mr. Grow at 15 to save on any of their products. Thank you.